What's your name? Yari Quintana. I'm 32 years old. I was born in Havana, Cuba. And you own? Eurales Customs. Eurales Customs is a shop where we specialize in customizing vehicles 1967 and older. We do American cars and we also do Volkswagens. We specialize in metal fabrication, complete disassembly of cars, paint and body, electrical, engine detailing, chassis work, air ride suspension, and complete building of the cars. Uh, we've been in business for about four years and I've been doing this for a good eight to ten years. I got into the cars because my godfather and my father were basically general mechanics at shops and during summer break I would be hanging around them, watching them work on cars and doing brake jobs and they'd let me get my hands dirty and it was something that always appealed to me, building something that was like larger Legos that the kids were playing with and they actually did something when you were done with it building, you can get in and drive it and move it around. So that, that got me into cars. I remember sitting in uh, my godfather's pickup truck and him just telling me stories about when he was in Cuba as a younger kid, uh, driving around in the American cars, 59 Pontiacs, and it was just very romantical stories about going from one side of the island to the other side to visit someone or drop someone off, and it just... It, it had a lot of soul in it, and that really captured me. As a teenager, I didn't have a very cool car. I had a Chevy Cavalier. It wasn't a very cool car. It still isn't a very cool car. <laughs> I tried to make it a little bit cooler. I lowered it with some spring clamps I bought at Discount Auto Parts, but that didn't help the cause. <laughs> I didn't work too much on it. I just saved up until I had enough money to buy something that I thought was cool which at the time was a 98 Volkswagen GTI. I did all the bolt-on stuff I could do to it. Coilovers, rims, system, headlights, taillights, this, that, and the other. My goal in life was to do industrial design. I really wanted to work for a large car company designing cars. And I wasn't seeing that feasible. I went into architecture, which is one of my original passions. Went to Miami Dade. I went to FIU, graduated top of class. I worked in architecture for seven years. I made it as far as being a partner in a firm. It wasn't, never satisfied. The passion for cars was always there, and I thought being an architect would give me the financial stability to play with cars. I found that it wasn't about having the financials to play with the cars, it was just playing with the cars. Jacking it up, taking off the rim, changing something putting it back down and stepping back and seeing what you do. How do you transition to the other customs? While I'm working at the firm, I started getting into welding classes at night. Right after work, 6 o'clock, I jump in my old Volkswagen, go up 27th Ave, go to the welding shop, and learn how to weld at night. Once I started welding and actually fabricating and doing heavier modifications on cars, I actually started getting customers at my house. And it would be a suspension job, notch my frames, narrow my front end so I could go lower. And these were all jobs that I was able to handle at my house, in my backyard. At that point, I realized I could make a living doing this. So, I pulled the plug on architecture. I just closed the door, turned around, walked away. I had saved up some money, I gave myself a buffer, and I told myself, if I can sustain myself, without having to touch this buffer, 
I'll keep going. And to this day, I haven't touched my savings. My family has always been very supportive of me. Um, they always stand behind whatever I want to do. They didn't think you were a little nutty? The main thing my mom wanted was for me to get a degree under my belt. If God forbid anything ever happened, I always have that to fall back on. I have something there. This is a Volkswagen Type 3 Squareback. It's a 1967. It's the first Volkswagen I ever bought, but it's not the first Volkswagen I ever drove because it was a complete project when I bought it. It was a rust bucket. No seats, no glass. I would go to different places throughout Florida. We would just get word of these places closing down and we'd just jump in a car and head over there to see what we found. And I found a front windshield there. The guy had two of them, a hood or a fender or a piece, a tail light. Or, and we would just, I'd just go and buy piece by piece of what I was missing. I think it took me about two to three years because again, it was my first full-scale project that I tackled. I did it all in the backyard. I tossed around the idea of spraying it myself back and forth, and my best friend George, he convinced me, let's let somebody else handle spraying the car. So we found a local body shop nearby. The car had no floors in it. I sat on the center tunnel, and my feet up on the rocker, and my best friend George, in his expedition, tied a rope to the front end of the car. He pulled me while I steered the car and I would pull the e-brake to stop. It was only about a mile away, but that's how we got the car to the paint shop and back. I really wanted something to stand out, but the colors, I wanted them to be vintage, and true Volkswagens of the 60s. So I went with a non-metallic paint job, solid color. I looked at a lot of old bugs for greens. I was set on having a green car. Why green? It has that military, kind of utilitarian, feel to it. It isn't red, which is a sporty color. I didn't consider this a sports car. So I, I was looking in the green family. The seats I bought in one of those Tampa runs, um, they're actually out of a bug. So I had to kind of modify them to make them fit into the Type 3 because they're not the same. And then the interior, I wanted it to contrast. Everybody would expect a tan interior or beige or white. So I went with a bright red. I cut a hole in the roof. Ragtop is from Street Peaks out of California. It's a universal ragtop, and we read the canvas top in red with the color black. Red. The visor came off of one of my friend's cars. He bought a notchback for his wife. It came with the visor. He knew I had a Type 3, so he called me up and said, Hey, my wife doesn't like the visor on the notchback, so he sent it down, and that's the visor I got. And that single yellow line in the front. Uh, it's just a very European thing. Uh, a lot of the guys in Europe run single fog lights back in the 60s. All the rubbers on the car are fresh. Uh, a company called ISP West and West Coast Metrics, also out of California. They pretty much have everything you need for spark rubber. When I first built the car, I just did it static. It was lowered. I loved it, but it wasn't the stance I wanted. I wanted it to lay out completely. So a company called Custom Coachworks, KCW, they're out of Colorado, owner John Jones, he was developing air ride system for Volkswagen. This is the first beam he made for the Type 3. It's got a single airbag in the center and it converts the Type 3 suspension to Type 1 suspension, which that allows you to go lower. We narrowed the front end from original about 8 inches. But we did that to be able to run the Supremes. Um, and then in the rear, we used shock waves to replace the original shocks. And we just removed all the torsion bars. So the rear sits on the shock wave. The first day I finished the car, the following weekend, the first thing I did was jump in it and drive it to Tampa. I was driving out to a Volkswagen car show that they did out of here in St. Petersburg. BW's on the pier, I believe it was called. That was awesome. That was a blast. I took off at 7 or 8 o'clock at night because I didn't want it to be super hot so I wanted to drive at night. I was just enjoying the ride. It was a beautiful night. The rag top was open and about 20 miles from my destination I ran out of gas. <laughs> I'm known for running out of gas. <laughs> Tell me about your other car. My 51 Buick. 
That was the first old American car I bought. I've had that maybe eight years or nine years. I'm the third owner of the car. Paid forty five hundred dollars for the car. Too bad. Yeah. It's funny because when I went to buy the car, the gentleman wanted fifty five hundred. I didn't have fifty five hundred. I only had forty six hundred. And in those forty six was a hundred bucks of gas to get me home. His wife took a liking to me. I told her I wanted to fix it up. I wanted to customize it. I wanted to lower it, chop the roof. And she told her husband, she said, listen, honey, this guy, he's you, 40 years ago. He doesn't have the money that you want for the car, but he deserves the car. You're gonna give him the car at 4,500. So she went and got the title and said, you give me the money and I'll give you the title. Don't worry about him. That's a hell of a story. <laughs> It's a car I never, ever want to get rid of because it's my first car I ever chopped. I can't let go of that car and I can't finish that car until I'm ready to finish that car the way I need to finish that car. I see myself uh, staying very low-key, very humble. I'd like to stay very personal with customers. I think that's important. I want to have my hand in the project. I like the one-on-one. -on -one the person that owns the car coming together and building something and knowing everything that is about the car market. What are three things you love best about your decision to become a hot rod dealer? I love the artistic expression about what I do. I feel like I create rolling sculptures, something you can get in and, and enjoy, not just yourself, but you can bring other people to it. I love working with my hands, getting dirty, cutting, welding, grinding. It's just something that doesn't happen often nowadays with CNC machines and computer automated this and that. You know, I, I like the old school hand built stuff. And lastly, you can't beat working for yourself. You know, I like to build stuff that I, I call timeless. In other words, this car was built 10 years ago still as cool as it was 10 years ago. This doesn't have a style, this is just timeless. So hopefully all my hard work will get me to that, where I can build cars where they're just timeless vehicles that you can enjoy today, 20 years from now, 40 years from now, 50 years from now. Hopefully people are looking back saying, yeah, I remember when that was built. It still looks cool. You gonna sell this car? A shop, a shop, a, a shop. What is it? It's a shop, a shop that's. Uh, And you know what? He's also the owner of Gadios Customs. Why well, do this help? But today, what are you doing? But today, Christopher Walken. Am I doing Christopher Walken? Yeah, you're going. But today, but today, but today, it's all about the square back. Thank you, American Muscle, for sending this to me. Hmm. <laughs> Hit my bassy voice on that last one. Business owners, like what you see on this video? Think you might want to become one of our advertising partners? Then advertise your brand on our all original BragginRights.com TV programming. Log on to BragginRights.com, click on the Advertise tab, and find out how you can place your ad on an upcoming episode of BragginRights.com TV.